So doing that assessment, Mary, and, and, and again in the internal medicine, primary care, geriatric office, um, what are the market kind of start talking a little bit about the brief instruments that, that he used that are standardized? Well, what do you like to do? What's your approach? Yeah, I, th I think it's important. Um, we use for cognition, um, if there's any suspicion, I think starting in, even in a busy primary care practice, the mini cog is an outstanding um, instrument uh, looking at a recall and um, and that's a, just a three three item recall and clock drawing. Um, so I get a tremendous amount of information just from those two questions. And then based on your uh, other you know clinical suspicions, you can add on other tools from your tool chest, whether it's more visual spatial. I like using trails as a very easy, trails um, A or B, very easy to um, administer in a busy primary care practice um, as well. Uh, we, we do screen um, regularly, both for alcohol um, with a, um, a screen as well as for depression. Even the um, two-item depression screen um, is helpful um, with um, with your tool chest ready to ask more questions and to make referrals to your colleagues and friends. Uh, our practice has a um, social worker who's a gerontologist that, that is able to do more um, advanced testing um, right on site. But wherever you are, having that team of, of providers that assist you to make sure that your patient gets the workup they deserve. Right, you had mentioned the um, sort of the, the wellness visit, the annual wellness visit, as being an opportunity to to at least discuss that. Um, very, very recently, the American Academy of Neurology uh, uh, put out a position statement that in individuals that are seen in our types of practices in, in neurology, geriatrics, etc., who are uh, 65 and older, should also be assessed by one of these instruments uh, every year. So I think that's a, a step forward. And the choice of it, again, depends on uh, proficiency, and there's lots of them to choose from. And exactly, exactly. Yeah. And time, and time. And time. The mini cog right. only takes a couple of minutes. Um, I love to do the MMSC or the MOCA um, screen if we have a bit more time, and I, I think it gives you um, more opportunities to see multiple domains of cognition. And, and you mentioned time. Does it have to be done all in one visit? A good, good question. And, and typically, uh, when you're talking about a, a a workup for cognitive um, behavioral syndrome, we're looking at several visits. Uh, I like uh, the annual wellness visit is, I find an easy way to put the issue on the table and ask and screen. Um, and, and then I always set up the next visit uh, with, hey, the next time you come in, we're gonna really focus on um, cognition. I want you to bring all the medicines from your cabin and I want you to, um, can, we, can we include a caregiver at that point? Um, and perhaps we're starting the workup already between the visits with um, head imaging or um, our cognitive lab panel. Right. Um, so maybe later on, I'll, I'll hit you up for ways that the, that the primary care or in geriatrics you can actually get paid for this and you know, bringing Absolutely. it up in multiple visits, both the, the evaluation part and the care management part. I think that's really, the practical part's really, really important. We've had some good news on that front. Oh, wonderful, good. Um, so turning to neuropsychology, which I think is, is a really, really important um, uh, resource for all of us, I think, um, and actually is, a, is, is one domain where you can spend uh, time with patients. Um, uh, can you give us some specific examples, Lily, when neuropsychological evaluation can be particularly useful uh, to help uh, your colleagues out here? Yeah, so for a variety of reasons, sometimes you may not be able to get sufficient information from your um, office exam, um, whether that be time or uh, maybe specific variables having to do with the patient, um, and you just need more information. Neuropsychology can be a very helpful resource for that. Um, so, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll see a patient with perhaps very high education who's scoring perfectly on um, your brief for cognitive assessments and you need um, a little bit uh, more information there and a more in-depth analysis of um, cognition to really determine that level of cognitive functioning. Um, and you know, perhaps that, that individual has some subjective cognitive impairment or maybe it's actually mild cognitive impairment compared to 
where we would expect them to lie initially. I think that's another benefit of neuropsychology is we give measures that actually look at that crystallized intelligence um, and we assess pre-morbid functioning and where we would expect them to um, fall um, prior to you know whatever pathological processes may be going on at present. Um, and so we're able to kind of do that com comparison and, and go from there. So, and that's similar to someone you may see in your office who has very low education and perhaps does not do well on your screen, um, but is that due to limited educational opportunities um, or is there actually a change happening there? Um, and so we can also be very helpful um, with that. Um, and then, you know, in general, uh, we tend to really tailor recommendations to the patient as best we can and to what uh, challenges they are having with cognition. And, um, you know, perhaps someone uh, may be having some trouble at home managing medications or, um, or even driving, and we can provide some recommendations and kind of um, give an idea of, of next steps and provide resources and so on. Great. So that actually brings up a really good point that, that Mary was suggesting that we have at our disposal the different tools, Minicog, Mocha, et cetera, um, and th there may be just sort of like just blunt cutoffs that we may use, but we're not, those are not, that may, you know, uh, necessarily adjusted for people with extremes of education, attainment, age, uh, maybe even language. And so this is something that the neuropsychology can really help us with. Yeah, absolutely. Or someone who has had longstanding uh, severe mental illness or comorbid psychiatric issues or, or really complex medical issues. Um, we can just kind of help provide more information with that. That's great.